Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Jack, the muscle and mobility maker with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to take care of that medial knee pain that you're getting just above the kneecap on the inside there in no time at all. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it doesn't get better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this one. All right, like I said, today we're gonna be dealing with a very specific knee pain. And this one's gonna be right at the medial part of our knee, just above the kneecap here on the inside. So you can see the actual head of the muscle that is commonly the problem here that's causing a lot of tension at that medial knee or pressure at the medial knee and pain right above or even right into the joint. And you'll see what I'm talking about as we get into some of the mobilities today. The way that we're gonna do it is take a, an approach that first of all addresses a couple different joints. So we're gonna look at what's going on at your ankle, make sure that is functioning the way that it should, what's going on at the hip, and then what's going on directly at the knee itself, making sure that it has enough space to gap and glide the way that it should. We're also going to be looking at some of the soft tissues there, specifically this medialis, vastus medialis muscle. Okay, so we'll be showing you how to do a self myofascial release technique there. And that's where you're probably going to get a lot of the most immediate relief from what you're feeling. Okay, but the long term fix is going to be the whole thing here. And then we're going to also add in some stability work to cap it off and really hit the save button on what we're doing here. So that's going to be our approach. Let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, the first thing we're gonna start with is a little bit bandage distraction series. So this is gonna go through the joints, specifically the ankle, the knee itself, and the hip. And we wanna make sure that function is at its best here. So at first we're checking ankle dorsiflexion. If I lack ankle dorsiflexion, this can often cause my foot to turn out. And if my foot turns out, that usually is gonna place more pressure on the medial knee because it's gonna change the mechanics of my leg. So first of all, we wanna drive the knees over the toes as far as we can with the foot completely flat. And it can help to actually drive up into the toes for a few seconds and then place the heel back down to help open up that ankle range of motion here in dorsiflexion. So you'll see me do that a few times, drive through the toes. I'm really getting the calf muscles engaging. And then when I let the heel back down, I want to let all those muscles relax. Next, I also want to test the system of the leg here. So I'm going to place my one hand on my foot to help it stay down as I externally rotate my hip. And I'm also going to go through a little half circle range of motion here. If this is challenging for the knee, just go slowly, move through it, give it some breath and let yourself relax into the position as much as possible as you work it through that range of motion. It might have some clicking, it might have some grinding at first, but this is something that's gonna help actually smooth that out and we'll visit a few other mobilities here in a moment that will also be beneficial to take pressure in this deep flexion of the knee in that external rotation of the hip. Next, with the band still anchored low on the post, we're gonna place one leg in so it's at the back of the knee that's bugging you here. And we're gonna go into a full extension that's resisted here. So here we're trying to cue the quadriceps to fire in a nice balanced way. One thing, I wanna keep that front leg as straight as possible as I'm working, and I'm trying to push through my glutes, extending the hip, but also through my quadriceps, extending the knee into the band and I'm reaching through the smallest toes of that back leg here. So I wanna imagine my leg kind of spinning inward toward the center of my body. That's internal rotation of the hip to help with stability. Now, we're gonna move the band up higher so that we can place it on the back of the glute, like a climbing harness, half of it here, or the world's greatest wedgie, okay? And we're going back into the split stance. Now from here, I want to either use a dowel or a wall, whatever you can support yourself, but reach over so that we're opening up those hip flexors and restoring hip extension to make sure again that the hip is functioning the way it should. You can see here I'm actively squeezing my glutes and I'm not doing it with my hand, I'm doing that with my glute muscles. I'm just putting my hand there as a cue to feel that. 
Okay, the last one with our band here is going to be a flexion gapping of the knee. So I have the band at the back of the knee. I'm going to sit to the floor and I wanna pull that heel as close to my butt as possible. The other leg is straightened out in front of me and my biggest goal here is to settle in and relax. Now this can be a very beneficial one if that deep flexion of the ankle dor dorsiflexion was challenging when we were doing that little half circle. So this will help open up if you feel tension at the knee where that band is pulling, try and convince yourself to breathe and relax into the pull of the band. And I guarantee you will feel some muscles release as you're holding this position. So we're gonna work in each of these for about two minutes for the most part. The reps of the leg in the uh, flex of the glutes, that can be about six to 10 reps to start. The extension of the knee, that could be about six to 10 reps to start, but you wanna build those up over time as well so that you're gaining strength and stability in those areas also. Okay, next we're gonna do some self myofascial release using a soft ball. Now this is where you might get the most immediate relief actually. So here we're placing the ball right over that painful range, okay? And we're going into a 90-90 sit position. If you can't quite get into this position, you can also try getting a um, rolling pin and actually using the rolling pin to roll out the inner thigh while you're seated as well. That can be helpful also. But here we can use gravity, get some good pressure on that ball. It's going to be pretty uncomfortable in that range. You might even feel it shoot some uh, different things into the middle of the knee here as you're putting pressure. Okay, we don't want it to go outside the range of discomfort though. So as long as it is discomfort, even if that is a high level of discomfort, we want to try and breathe and take that discomfort Put some motion to it if you can. So you can see I'm trying to extend my knee and bend my knee in certain positions and really allow for some movement as I tack those tissues down and then floss them through the pressure of that ball. After about two minutes, you should notice that there's a decrease in the intensity of that discomfort to the pressure of the ball and we're starting to see improvements in that area. So take your time, settle into it, really play around you can move a little bit higher up you're going to notice some tensions we're going to try and work those trigger points out and this is where we'll get the most immediate relief you can bet on that right there Next, we're gonna focus on the insertions of the hamstrings and the origin of those calf muscles at the back of the knee to make sure that they're not holding any excess tension causing that problem. Now, I want to, again, place the ball at the back of the knee as deep as I can. This is gonna do a flexion gapping effect as well, so putting space at the knee once again to help it articulate better. You'll see me rise up into the toes, pushing through. I wanna actively tack and floss those tissues a bit and really work through that full range of extension of the leg. And again, I'm gonna work with hip external rotation. So I'm making sure that ball is on that medial side as I open up. You might notice an immediate difference here as well with that ball in place, creating some extra space for the knee to articulate there. And finally, we're gonna use our band one more time at about just above knee height, placing it at the back of both knees and doing some squats. So I'm letting the band actually cue me to open up my knees, drive the knees wide as I pull down, and then also to fully extend through my quadriceps, recruiting them the way that we want to. So it's important to note that this is a full approach to recovering the knee here. We wanna make sure that we are incorporating what's happening at the hip, that you have the strength and stability that you need there because oftentimes if the knee collapses inward, this is putting excess pressure on that vastus medialis or the inside ligaments of the knee. So this is helping us stabilize the movement so that we're able to once again confidently move with that knee not collapsing inward or taking excess pressure on it that it shouldn't have to. All 
All right, and there you have it. A quick and simple mobility-based approach that you can use to address that knee joint itself, address the soft tissues that are causing issues on that inner knee there, and stabilize and ultimately fix this inner knee pain for good. If you like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend, especially if you know they're specifically dealing with this very same issue or have knee issues in general. Now, if you're somebody who has been dealing with reoccurring aches and injuries for quite some time now or training aches and injuries that are nagging you and just don't seem to be going away, or you wanna simply improve your mobility over the next 12 weeks, what I want you to do right now is drop down below into the description here to fill out and schedule your mobility blueprint call. This will be a quick 40 minute call with myself to assess your current movement, develop your mobility blueprint to address your current needs and overall goals that you have, and ultimately clearly lay out how online coaching works for mobility programming. And if that interests you, go ahead again, drop down in the description, and we will get you moving in the right direction to take care of those aches and injuries sooner than later. Ready? Go. Now, lastly, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine, and it doesn't get better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. We'll see you next week.